Hey there, everyone. Um, so this is episode two in the hammer noggin project. We're going to be looking at uh, sculpting the torso that was created in Grobato. I'm importing the OBJ here, and uh, I will note that uh, these OBJs, when you bring them in, will each show up over here in the items list on the right hand side as one of these little folder items uh, with the mesh inside. And uh, if you watch the first video, you know we set up uh, two or three of these and they're designed to fit together perfectly uh, when imported, and they will, um, and they'll show up each separately in that list up there. So here we're just running the prep script, which if you have seen the previous videos, and you should uh, take a look at those, um, simply does some setup of the imported mesh, including what you just saw there, which is turning on the multi-res Catmill Clark subdivision. It also creates a couple of useful selection sets that we'll look at quickly here. Um, based on the seams, the Grobato mesh seam structure. And uh, one is polygons and the other is uh, boundaries. Boundaries are good for creating uh, Catmill Clark edge weights, among other things. Uh, and I'll also note that, as usual, all of the patches from Grobato have been converted to parts here in Moto. Uh, actually, it's whatever, you it's whatever you export from Grobato as groups that gets converted into parts, and we recommend patches. And you can see, as I click on some of them there, um, they highlight, but it's much easier to use the materials selection mode, and you can simply roll the mouse over your OBJ, or I mean your mesh, and find all of these parts. And uh, that requires that polygon tag type be set to part, as you saw there in the select menu. And of course there are the two weight maps created by the prep script. Uh, that's covered very well in earlier videos. But for our first edit here, we're not going to use any of that stuff. We're going to use just the standard radial falloff, Moto standard tool and uh, use that together with the translate tool here just to kind of bulge out the chest there a little bit give them a little bit more of a barrel chest and there you can see the effect in the preview render and then we're going to use that uh, same spherical fall off but now we are going to add our weight fall off and that is going to come from the imported weight maps and you will see that now, as I expand outward, different parts of the mesh expand at different rates, and that's due to the weight of the weight map. And it adds additional definition to those forms. In fact, we're going to enhance that definition further using the Grobato Toolkit Weight and Slice tool, which has been covered pretty thoroughly in the first couple of videos since we released the toolkit. Uh, essentially what it does is create a weight map with uh, soft edges and it also slices the seam rows so that you have some new geometry to work with there allowing you to edit and uh, reshape that patch and get a nice smooth transition between those edits and the rest of the model as you see here. So this is just typical simple stuff. Note that the spherical fall off is also still in effect. So the uh, majority of the effect is taking place down towards the tip of that uh, part of the collar where it runs down at the front of the torso. And I'm just doing a variety of scaling and translation moves here to add the kind of definition and form to the collar itself and to those edges where it meets the torso. And uh, you can get things that are very sharp and refined or kind of smooth and gradual, it's entirely up to you. Uh, before we do any more of that sort of detail work, I'm going to do something kind of global here uh, using the seam structure of the Grobato mesh and these uh, selection sets that were created as part of the prep script. Um, this is a trick I often use, and you've probably seen it before, where we're, we're, we're simply going to push those rows inward a little bit. And remember, they're, they're one shy of the number of rows in the seam so there's, they, they have the opportunity to create kind of a nice little indented channel. But this is a, at a very low value, a, very, a fairly subtle effect. 
Uh, in fact, you'd want to be pretty careful if you apply it uh, with much more magnitude than this because it'll sort of start to dominate everything. And In that case, you might want to consider using falloffs uh, to modulate the effect a little bit or otherwise localize it. But here it's uh, very subtle and uh, I think it'll be fine. Um, I like the flatness that it provides uh, to those wide seams. But there was an area here that I noticed that I wanted to work on and, and uh, model a little bit where uh, there's a little more definition to those otherwise flat seams than I would like. And there's a nice cure for that in Moto. We're simply going to use the smooth tool to dampen down some of that bulging you see around the corners there just to create a flatter cleaner area for uh, a little bit of detail modeling I plan on doing in just a moment here. So we'll go ahead and grab that selection set again and, and this time I'm going to just use the shift down arrow key to shrink it in by one more row down to two rows instead of three before I apply the smooth tool because I really don't want it uh, creeping out towards the edge and affecting uh, the otherwise nice look of those seams. I just want to dampen down that center part of it where it bulges a little. And I crank up a lot of iterations here for the smooth tool and uh, just give it a click and you can see it, it flattened out quite nicely. So with that done, uh, perhaps another quick little tour around the model to uh, make sure that I didn't affect anything else uh, adversely. All looks fine. There are these uh, sort of cute little dimples I noticed here. They're, they're a perfectly legitimate part of the, uh, the mesh. They're a result of the smoothing and re relaxation that we do in Roboto, and I think I might take advantage of those further down the road by having some very fine detail, some sort of wire-like forms inserted there. I think it'll be a, a convincing effect. I'd note that that little set of procedures there around the seams uh, sort of overrides any need to use Catmull Clark edge creasing or to set uh, edge weights, uh, things are pretty crisp already uh, because of the seam structure uh, of Gorbato itself, which already has uh, a distribution of rows that creates some sharpness uh, with the setup that we used here. In any case, um, back to those little triangular patches that I wanted to use as a, a detail on this torso. I'm going to use the weight and slice tool again to again set up a uh, weight map for those two parts, those two patches, and a transitional edge and extra seam rows so that I can manipulate them and I have a nice smooth transition. And uh, one little uh, handy thing to know here is that the action center options in Moto allow you to set up both the center and the orientation, the axis of your tool to drive both of those things from the selection itself. Now I've turned uh, symmetry on, X symmetry, which is always the symmetry used in Grubato. And you see after I made those adjustments to the action center, uh, the tool now points uh, directly outward along the normal or the flat surface of that patch. And uh, that's going to serve us very well when we start pulling it outward. And uh, right now it's just going to be one of those cases where I'm going to let you watch as I simply played and explored, uh, looked at various options for treatments of those triangular patches. And certainly a wealth of things that could have been done. Here, I'm, I, here I tried pushing them in a bit, which uh, had a nice look. Uh, but that wasn't quite what I was going for, so uh, played a little bit more, tried pushing them back out again, and, and then out and in, and kind of a, a little embedded uh, tab there or something, uh, sort of appears applied to the surface. But really, all in all, the look that I wanted for this thing is kind of sturdy and solid. And in the end, I went for this very simple notion of just making a really sharp edge using the sharp patch edge option there in the weight and slice tool and cranking up its amplitude a bit to 0.7 so that when I pull that outward you can see it's a very crisp smooth transition back to the uh, larger surface of the torso but very crisp around the little triangular patch itself 
and uh, that seemed to suit my uh, aesthetic that I'm going for with this piece uh, quite well. Speaking of which, I do tend to overwork these demo pieces a bit. Uh, it's as much about uh, showing various techniques and methods as it is about chasing down a, uh, a nice model, so that's fine. Uh, and with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and hunt around for some more patches to play with using the weight and slice tool. This one here on the back side was certainly very tempting. Uh, kind of has the feel as I worked it up here of a, kind of a cover for a hot air vent or something of that nature. You can see it uh, as a shield for the exhaust coming out of the uh, engine of this guy. And uh, you can see I'm combining Moto's standard falloff tools like linear falloff uh, along with the weight map produced by the weight and slice tool. Um, this time I used a little Moto bend as well to give it a little more sophisticated and subtle reshaping and curvature. And that's the great thing here. You can mix and match just about anything. And because of the way we set up these weights and these edge treatments, uh, these transitions, uh, just about everything works cleanly and gives you a nice result. So off down to the uh, waist area here, which I wanted to reshape a bit. It's very conical, kind of a little too regular. And in this case, we're going to go back to the weight maps that were brought in with the prep script brought in from Grobato. And we'll take a quick look at the one we're going to use here. And those red areas are going to be the areas that are affected most by the tool. Again, I have a linear fall off in effect. I went ahead and set up the, you'll notice I went ahead and set up the weight and slice stuff even though I'm not using it. Just because uh, as long as I was in there working with that patch, I thought I would uh, go ahead and create its maps and those extra seam rows just in case I needed them uh, as I played with this. Turns out I didn't do much with them, but I may later still. Uh, instead, we're working through the weight map that was part of the prep script. And just kind of reshaping things down there. And you can see this is a somewhat different effect. It's not all concentrated around the edges. It, uh, it's a transitional effect. It's a nice smooth effect that takes place over the entire surface and allows you to reshape it in a more global sense. Alright, so after that, I uh, went after the shoulder pads here, which uh, turned out to be a lot of fun. Now you'll notice here I, I turned symmetry on initially, and then I go and set up the weight and slice uh, weight maps and uh, sliced seams. But uh, I ended up turning it off again so that I could just put the scale tool in the center and push everything kind of upward and outward kind of gave everything a nice flare to begin with. And then I went back and turned symmetry back on and started working on the shape of the, of the individual shoulder pads, if you will. And here again, I, I just played around a lot. I tried a lot of subtle variations. Again, I didn't want anything too loud or, 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 or obvious here. I wanted to keep this thing kind of, kind of simple and kind of solid. In the end, I ended up using a combination of the weight and slice tool as well as the global falloffs uh, that came in with the import and it gave me this kind of nice very subtle S curve there across the top of the shoulder pads which I rather like but you never know I saved off a lot of variations as I played around here and who knows what will make it into the final model here you see a little bit of before and after um, the original imported Grobato mesh and uh, the modeled and reshaped version so uh, next time we're going to go off and uh, start working on the head. That should be fun. And uh, I hope you'll tune in then. Thanks.